Well, hey guys, we are just starting on to a new subject or new material with this book, um, Revolution in World Missions. Now, as you get started, hopefully you've either already read or you're about to read the chapters and the material in here. You could have gotten the physical copy, you might have gotten the downloadable copy, or they also have an audio copy with the links that I provided. If you got that download or you got the print copy because you ordered it and it arrived, just a heads up, you will be on their mailing list for here till eternity. I don't know why they do that, but that's just kind of what they do, the cost of the free book. But it's it's a nice book. You'll see it's it's a pretty small read. It may look big, but it reads fast. So one thing with this book is if you look actually at the title page in the beginning, you'll find that the very first time this was printed is in 1986. So that's like 30 years ago almost, uh, actually 34 years ago. And it has been reprinted almost 50 times, 47 times to be exact, because there have been so many of these printed that they've just re gone and reprinted and made edits and so forth. And as you get towards the end of the book, you'll actually see that it's been updated with more material. So this book has been around for quite a while. It's a good read. In it, you'll find that KP, this is a picture on the screen, by the way, of KP, and Gospel for Asia is his nonprofit. You'll find that he's going to be pretty harsh towards the West. So just a heads up, there's going to be some critiques here, hopefully that open your eyes, but also challenge you to grow as you read this book. Now, each chapter is very short, a few pages, typically a few minutes read. Um, it's got a nice little bit of story, and then you'll see typically he'll throw in a little theology or thoughts as well that we'll dwell on. And so in the video series that we're going to go through with this is going to go through the book material. I'm just going to pull out key ideas from it, not actually necessarily addressing specifically what he's talking about in it, but things that he maybe have challenged you or we, we need to dwell on. There's one additional thing I want to address is that there was a controversy with Gospel for Asia, the KP's ministry, and it was so sued and the, the lawsuit was found found them guilty. And so the question is, should we use a this resource considering that there's been a lawsuit against him? And the quick answer, I think yes, is I read the whole lawsuit. It's like 200 pages, very boring read. But essentially what they were getting sued for is a misappropriation of funds. That's a fancy way to say when I gave, if you gave money to them, then they didn't use it for what they had told you would. Now, I was a huge supporter of them before. I'm still a big supporter of them. Um, I've given to them and I still will give or continue to give to them because they're a great organization. But here's what they did. So what they would do is they would advertise and say, please send $10,000 to buy two cows for a village. And if I gave my $10,000, what it was found out was they didn't actually buy those two cows. What they would do instead is they'd give that $10,000 to a local evangelist who would go to the town and ask the town, what do you need? And maybe they used that $10,000 and they used half of it to build a water well because that was needed. And then they used another part for a cow and then some goats and a bicycle, all that the village requested because that's what they needed. And you can see this is where they got him into legal trouble because I had donated for cows, but when the money got to the village, the village said, no, what we really need is water. And so they were sued and found that, yes, they had lied in that or misrepresented the facts. But when reading the whole court case, what I found interesting was it, it, they, were, they still gave all of the funds that they promised they were going to away. So the $10,000, while it didn't go to buy a cow, it went to buy a water well because that's what's needed. And to me, they kept at forefront the idea that, hey, we want to bring the gospel out. We want to bring the gospel out. So they still took all the money and they did what they were going to advance the gospel everywhere. And I think that's why I'm still a big supporter of them. I shouldn't say I think that. That is why I'm a big supporter is because they are in touch with the people on the ground. And while I wanted to give towards a cow, they said, you know what would do more benefit for the gospel is a water well. And so they built a water well with my money. Totally fine. You want to know why? Because people are being helped. People are being led to the gospel. And that's that's really what this book is going to challenge us to do is support them and say, trust the people on the ground that they know what is needed better. And so that's the controversy. You can go online, you can search it, read it and dive into more details with it. But just because based off of that, they are still really responsible. Almost all the funds given still goes out in the field. And you can support a missionary through their organization. And I highly recommend that later on. But just wanted to address that and say, here we go. This is a good book. I uh, hope you enjoy reading it. As always, shoot me an email, 
questions as you come into a controversy, it's happy to answer that. But we're going to start up next in terms of chapter one and see what does that reveal or challenge us in our faith. So say, stay tuned. <laughs>